in this video we're going to focus on creating a Gantt timeline chart and you can see here basically this is like a house renovation project and then we have all these different items we want to make and you can see here the duration of every item so this one would take about three days or it takes two days here minimum then here the, for the bedroom it takes another few days and you can see here gradually it changes so let's start to explore how to do this so let's start to explore how to make a get timeline chart in chart.js so the first thing what we need is we need to get our default code in chart.js 3 getting started this specific link and you can find the link as well in your description box so what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here and just copy this entire chunk of code copy this and if you want to understand what this code does make sure you watch this video it explains it all paste it in there and then I'm going to cut out the title here, put the title on there, save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this here, and what I want to do here is to create basically a timeline. So to create a timeline, I need to swap the axis. Here, instead of the uh, x-axis should have the categories, we want to swap them here to the y-axis. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to scroll down here and look here for the options, and then here I will say index axis, and this will be equal to y. So it will be now set on the y-axis. Make sure you have a comma here. Save this. Refresh. There we are. So now we have the first part. So basically what I want to do here next is, well, what we could do is to reduce the bar size of this. Because right now this bar is quite thick. And the request was to make it very narrow. So I'm going to create here very simply. Uh, we're going to remove the border width. We don't need the border width, first of all. So we refresh here. There's no more border. However, I do want to have this color here. So I'm going to copy that. Put it in there save that and a refresh all right now what i want to do here is the following i'm going to say here bar percentage and this will reduce the size of the bar or the bar thickness based on the percentage here of, or based on the category so this is the category you can see these two line ticks that sticks out and that is basically the starting point and the ending point here so right now the bar percentage is equal to about or approximately 80 percent so let's do this to only 10% uh, 0.1 save refresh and now you get this very narrow and I guess this is slightly too narrow and I would say 0.2 would be equal to 20% and that's quite acceptable all right so now we have this and then what we want to do is I want to just give this some proper matching name so let's say we have a project here I'll call this a uh, house project or house renovation is it renovation or renovation yes house renovation that's it and then what I want to do here is let's say we have the kitchen we have here the bathroom we have here the uh, I guess the toilet or the plumbing uh, plumbing or whatever I'm just making up as I go uh, the patio the garden etc etc all right garden and finally uh, porch. all right save that refresh so now we have all of these here so you can imagine here we need to have as well what I would say the proper dates in here. So what I want to do here is I want to make this floating. So let's say we start with the kitchen first and after three days we're going to start with the bathroom and then afterwards we're going to do one day for the toilet and then another day for the plumbing etc etc. So those lines or basically bars need to be only in segments and show only the part that is necessary. So to do this we first need to use basically or we need to add up here the date so we're going to add up the date adapter. So to do that, we need to go to charges to get the specific date adapter. So go to charges.org and then you go to ecosystem. And in the ecosystem, once it loads, scroll down here and look for the adapters. Click on that. And then you have here three options. You have the moments, the Loxon, and the date FNS adapter. I would recommend use these two here because moments has been deprecated and they are not updating it anymore. And what I would say, if you are not going to do any date modification that is necessary with this specific library, use this one. If you need to do a date modification, I would say go for this one. This one tends to be easier for me, by the way. So if it's easier for you as well, go for that. Why? This one here only requires one JavaScript file to be included, while this one requires two. And if you're not doing any modification, in that case, I would say date FNS is the winner. So I'm going to select that. And then scroll down here and then just scroll down and copy this specific date FNS bundle. Copy that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it in there. But remember, we need to put it after the JavaScript library. 
because this needs to load first because there are certain values and variables being loaded here that the Chart.js adapter needs to have. That's very important. So now if I save this, we're basically done. But of course, we need to, if I refresh here, you will see there nothing changes because we need to activate the scale. So what I want to do here now in the scale, I want to activate the dates. We're going to put your old dates. So I'm going to say here the following. It's a comma here. And then we're going to say here type equals time. And then what I want to say here, unit, or sorry, no, time. This is not a time object because what we really did here is we added now a time object, which is this one here, because of our date adapter. And then in here, we can say the following. I'm going to say a unit, and what I want to see here is every single day. That's it. So once we have this, we can save this now and refresh. And you can see it does something, but of course, it is not fully operational because we're missing the dates. So let's go and work on the dates. To do that, I need to change this as well because this is not practical for us. We need to use here what we call a floating bar. So that will mean that, let's say for the kitchen, it would be three days. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a date where we have a starting date and the ending date. So we're going to say here, the first one, put a bracket, and then we're going to say here, quotation. And let's say today is, well, let's start in February. So we say 2022, 02 for February, and then 01. And then what I want to do is this project, which is related to the kitchen, requires three days. All right, so once we have this, we can copy this. And I want to make sure we have a comma here. So right now, I'm just going to put multiple items here. Oh, sorry, that is not what I wanted. Thanks. All right, so I'll just, I'll just copy that. That's probably better. All right, so in total, we should have seven items. There we are. And then let's start and do the bathroom. You know, I'm just going to make them up as I go. So let's say from three to to six and then from six to seven we have for the toilet one day and the plumbing required from seven to nine i have no idea i'm just making up as i go and then we have the patio and the patio is a more extensive project so it requires it to 13 and then here from 13 we go to 15 for the garden and finally the porch 15 to 21 save this refresh all right, so now it works, but we have a problem here because the starting point starts by default on the uh, date of where, it's, where it starts, basically 1970. So that would mean it re doesn't recognize the starting point here. So I'm going to put now a starting point in here. So we say here, the minimum value would be, well, 2022 to February, oh, sorry, February number one. Save that. Make sure comma and then save, refresh, and there we are. So now you can see here the kitchen, etc., etc. So the entire item is now nicely as a Gantt chart or a timeline chart. Of course, we could do this here as well with the tooltip, but I will have there a special video for that to recommend you to watch. And that's basically it. So if you enjoyed this and maybe you want to go even deeper or more advanced, I'm going to recommend you this specific one. This video here on how to create a Gantt chart for project management in Chart.js. We're going to work with dates, adjust everything, and play around with some more advanced features as well.